Hello, I'm David Cram, manager of service training. The apple itself is easy to service. The only things that you'll have to worry about are changing the motherboard, changing the power supply, changing the power light bulb, changing the keyboard, and occasionally changing a key. It's all pretty easy, but you'll want to do it at least once before you start practicing on your customer's apples. Let's walk through it. The first thing we'll do is turn off the power and disconnect the power cord. And then take the lid off and remove all the firmware cards. Now we'll turn the apple upside down and rest it on a protective pad. And we have 10 screws to remove. One, two, three, four, five, six on the flat part of the back, and then four in the front. This is number nine. And the last one, number 10. Okay, now once you got the screws out, you want to turn the apple over again, but you've got to hang on to both the top and the base. Don't let them get apart, because we have to unplug the keyboard. You lift the top up and reach underneath and unplug the keyboard plug. Now we can take the top and put it aside. Now if you want to do that much now, just stop the tape, eject it without rewinding, and take it with you back to your station. If you uh, want to go ahead, why well, just stay with us. To remove the motherboard, first pinch the sides of the power plug and take, the, uh, take out the power supply plug. Then we have to unplug the speaker and remove the nut from the middle of the board. There's a washer that goes with that too. At least it's supposed to go with it. Okay, we have to remove the board now from six standoffs. One, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one right in the middle. To do that, you press on the side of the standoff and raise the board past it. These little plastic standoffs are fragile, sort of. You have to be careful, or use at least a little bit of care. And finally, the one in the middle. And now I can lift the motherboard. Oops. There we go. Now I can lift the motherboard right off. There. Now, here's another logical break if you want to go back to your workstation and take out the motherboard. If you do, uh, as usual, stop the tape, eject it without rewinding, and take it with you back to your station. Removing the keyboard consists of turning the housing upside down, protecting the keyboard, and then removing these four screws in the corners. Now, sometimes when you look at the keyboard, they'll look different. Some keyboards will look like this. They still have four screws, and two screws on each side. Some of them have a different color. It's still the same place where they're screwed down. There's only one surprise that you might run into. Uh, this is a new keyboard, 
and you can tell it's new because it has the black flanges on the two sides. If you want to replace an old keyboard with a new keyboard, there will be a little bit of a surprise, and I'll show you what that is. Just take these screws out. off and set it aside and you will see that the new one doesn't fit. The only way I can get that new one to fit is to take these off. So I'll do that. the new keyboard will fit right down in here. Okay, that's all there is to replacing the keyboard. I'll just turn it right side up. Putting the apple back together is just the reverse of taking it apart. I'll put the uh, base here. I'll put the motherboard over the standoffs. And then press until they click into place. six of those and then I put the lock washer and the nut in the middle and then I plug in the speaker cord and plug in the power supply that's polarized you have to be careful which way you plug it Okay, now I put the top down and plug in the keyboard. Being careful to get all the pins in all the holes and then holding them together, turn the apple upside down. Now in the back here, there's a little metal tab right here, and we've got to be sure that that falls in the little slot right there. Okay, now we have 10 screws to put back in. That's one. This is number nine. And number 10. Now, turn the apple back right side up. Now, go back to your workstation and catch up. Just uh, stop the tape and eject it without rewinding and take it with you back to your station.
Once in a while, you'll have to replace the power light bulb. First, pry off the cap, and then take off the shift key cap, too. Now, if there's a, a scutcheon or a shield around the light, pry it up and just lift it up. And then very carefully reach down in and pull the bulb straight up. Oops, there. Now, getting it back in uh, requires a steady hand, a good source of light, and, and the eyes of a child. The problem is you got to get these filaments here into those holes there. So you just go right straight down. Oops, I almost had it there. There, good. And putting the cap back on. Be sure that the bulb itself is centered so that the cap snaps into place. And then replace the shift key and replace the power cap. And that's all there is to it. Replacing a key is a simple matter, requiring only a screwdriver, a soldering iron, and a solder sucker. First, you have to decide which key you're going to replace. If you look at the diagram in your service binder, you can see which number corresponds to which key. Uh, let's say we're going to replace the, the L or the K key. We look at the diagram, and the K is number 36. I look over on the keyboard and on the back, and there's a number 36 right there. Now, the first thing I want to do is to add a little fresh flux to the solder joints because that'll make it easier to suck up the solder. So I put a little rosin core solder on each joint. Just a little dab will do me. Then I load the solder sucker, heat up the joint, and suck the solder out. Heat up the other joint and suck the solder up. Now I want to be sure that I got those. Try it just a little bit more here. Okay, now Remove the screw. And when I lift the keyboard off the pad, the key should remain on the pad. And there it is. Now, putting the new key in is easier if you take off the adjacent key caps. And what we need to do is feed the contacts down through the little holes and then hold it while we put the screw in. And then solder it up. Heat the pad and the pin and put the solder on. Heat the pad and the pin and put the solder on. Okay, uh, for now, find a practice keyboard and a soldering gun and solder sucker and practice removing and replacing keys until you can do it smoothly. Oh, and before you go, would you please rewind the tape? Thanks.